Hello everyone. Welcome to the presentation. Today we are going to discuss about DNA replication in prokaryotes. If you are new to this channel, please press the subscribe button and click on the bell icon to get notified. The DNA replication has been extremely well studied in uh, prokaryotes primarily because uh, the small size of the genome and large number of variants available. E. coli has around 4.6 million base pairs in a single circular chromosome and all of it get replicated approximately in 42 minutes starting from single origin of replication and proceeding around the chromosome in both the directions. This means that approximately 1000 nucleotides per second are added. The process is much more rapid than in eukaryotes. The prokaryotic chromosome is a circular molecule with a less extensive coiling structure than the eukaryotic chromosomes. The eukaryotic chromosome is a linear and highly coiled around proteins. While there are many similarities in the DNA replication process, the structural differences necessitates some differences in the DNA replication process in the two life forms. DNA replication in prokaryotes has been extensively studied. So we will learn the basic process of prokaryotic DNA replication in this video. So let's see how the replication machinery know where to start the uh, replication process. It turns out that there are specific nucleotide sequences called the origin of replication where the replication begins. E. coli has a single origin of replication on its own one chromosome as do most of the prokaryotes. The origin of replication is approximately 245 base pair long and is rich in AT sequence. The sequence base pair is recognized by certain proteins that bind to this site. An enzyme called helicase unwinds the DNA by breaking the hydrogen bond between nitrogenous base pairs. ATP hydrolysis is required for this process because it requires energy. As the DNA opens up, Y-shaped structure called replication forks are formed. Two replication forks are formed at the origin of replication and this gets extended bidirectionally as replication proceeds. The single stranded binding proteins code the single strands of DNA near the replication fork to prevent the single strand DNA from binding back to the double helix. The next important enzyme is DNA polymerase 3 also known as the DNA Pol3 which adds nucleotides one by one to the growing DNA chain. The addition of nucleotides requires energy. This energy is obtained from the nucleotides that have three phosphate attached to them. ATP structurally is an adenine nucleotide which has three phosphate groups attached. Breaking of the third phosphate release energy. In addition to ATP, there are TTP, CTP and GTP. Each of these is made of, of a corresponding nucleotide with three phosphates attached. When the, bond, when the bond between the phosphates is broken, the energy released is used to form phosphodiester bond between incoming nucleotides and the existing chain. In a prokaryotes, three main types of DNA polymerase are known. They are DNA polymerase 1, DNA polymerase 2 and DNA polymerase 3. DNA polymerase 3 is the enzyme required for DNA synthesis. DNA polymerase 1 is used later in the process and DNA polymerase 2 is used primarily for repair. DNA polymerase is able to add nucleotides only in the 5' to 3' direction. It requires a 3' hydroxyl group to which it can add the next nucleotide by forming phosphodiester bond between 3' hydroxyl end and the 5' phosphate of the next nucleotide. This essentially means that it cannot add nucleotides if free 3' OH group is not available. Then how does it add the first nucleotide? The problem is solved with the help of a primer that provides the 3' OH end. Another enzyme uh, called the RNA primase synthesizes the synthesize an RNA primer that is about uh, 5 to 10 nucleotides long and complementary to the DNA. RNA primase does not require free hydroxyl group because this sequence primers the DNA synthesis. It is appropriately called the primer. DNA polymerase can now extend this RNA primer adding nucleotides one by one that are complementary to the template strand. The replication fork moves at the rate of around 1000 nucleotides per second. 
DNA polymerase can only extend in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, which poses slight problem at the replication fork. As we know, the DNA double, double helix is anti-parallel. That is, one strand is in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. The other one is oriented to in the 3' prime to 5' prime direction. One strand which is complementary to the 3' prime 5' prime parental DNA strand is synthesized continuously towards the replication fork because polymerase can add nucleotides in this direction. This continuously synthesized strand is known as the leading strand. The other strand complementary to 5' prime 3' prime parental DNA is extended away from the replication fork in small fragments known as the Okazaki fragments and is requiring a primer to start the synthesis. Okazaki fragments are named after the Japanese scientist who first discovered them. The strand with Okazaki fragments is known as the lagging strand. The leading strand can be extended by one primer alone, whereas the lagging strand needs new primer for each, each of the short uh, Okazaki fragments. The overall direction of the lagging strand will be 3' to 5' prime, and that of the leading strand is 5' prime to 3'. Prime. A protein called sliding clamp holds the DNA polymerase in place as it continues to add nucleotides. The sliding clamp is a ring-shaped protein that binds to the DNA and holds polymerase in the place. Topoisomerase prevents the overwinding of the DNA double helix ahead of the replication fork as the DNA is opening up. It does so by causing temporary nicks in the DNA helix and uh, then releasing it. As DNA synthesis proceeds, the RNA primers are replaced by DNA polymerase 1, which breaks down the RNA and fills the gap with DNA nucleotides. The nicks that remain between newly synthesized uh, DNA and the previously synthesized DNA are sealed by the enzyme DNA ligase that catalyzes the formation of phosphodiester linkage between the 3' OH end of the new one nucleotide and 5' phosphate of end of the other fragment. Once the chromosome has been completely replicated, the two DNA copies moves from different moves into two different cells during cell division. The process of DNA replication can be summarized as follows. So initially the DNA unwinds at the origin of replication and the helicase opens up the DNA forming replication fork. These are extended in both directions. Single standard binding proteins coat the DNA around the replication fork to prevent the rewinding of the DNA. Topo isomerase binds at the region ahead of the replication fork to prevent the supercoiling. Primase synthesizes RNA primers complementary to the DNA strand and the DNA polymerase 3 starts the adding of nucleotides to, to the 3' OH end of the primer. Elongation of both the lagging and leading strand continues and the RNA primers are removed and gaps are filled by DNA by DNA polymerase 1. The gaps between the DNA fragments are sealed by DNA ligase. So this is the overall process of the DNA replication and the enzyme involved in the process. Hope you are clear with the topic. If you like the video, please like and press the like button. Thank you.